this week started off with a couple small snowstorms and it's been really quiet around here this week because of it. The snow didn't amount to a whole lot. It was basically just a dusting of snow, but there were some high winds that came out of it. And I'm actually ready for the snow to stop and go away. I have mentioned it in the past that I have spring fever. I'm anxious to get out and about and do things. But right now, I need to get that wood stack that I've been putting off all winter because the snow is starting to melt. I'm not so concerned about bringing the wood into the cabin because I don't keep the cabin that warm as it is, about 50, 55 degrees. And with the temperatures coming up, I don't need to have a fire going all the time. Even in the winter time, I don't do that because with my bedroom being in the loft of the cabin and heat rising, it means that I don't need to keep a fire stoked overnight. Uh, it's really warm in the loft of the cabin most nights. In fact, some nights I even sleep with the back door, which is in the loft open and let the cool air come in even in the winter time. Yeah, there are cabins in Alaska that have a boiler or a furnace. Uh, boilers are more common. Furnaces typically are gonna run on natural gas and natural gas isn't out in this area just yet. I know some of you are concerned about me bringing in insects or spiders into the cabin when I bring in the wood, but all I've ever seen in the cabin are these small brown spiders that are harmless. There are no venomous spiders in Alaska. And yes, there are ticks, but I've never seen one either. A couple months ago, I was out here stacking wood and it was about negative 20. And the question came up about why can't you see my breath if it was that cold? It's because it was really dry that day. And with less moisture in the air, it means any moisture that you're breathing out gets immediately absorbed into the atmosphere. I had also gotten a question about burning my kitchen debris for warmth in the cabin. And this is just something I'm not comfortable with doing. Here you can see I'm carrying out just a couple bags of trash. This is from two weeks worth of uh, collection, if you will. And one of the reasons that I don't do this, and this is something I've mentioned in the past, is that I don't burn any paper inside my wood stove because it can get carried up the embers of that, that is, can get carried up through the chimney. They carry far on the wind and they can land in the trees and then create a fire um, either on the cabin or elsewhere. And I'm just not willing to take that chance. So I do use this outside trash burner. And here you can see that the trash doesn't even really burn all that well. It doesn't create as much uh, ash as the wood does because it doesn't burn as great as wood. And it also wouldn't provide that much heat. Um, and to be honest with you, when you're burning the trash, even though I'm not burning anything that can create a noxious fumes like plastic or things like that, it still smells. Um, it, you know, cause there are waxes and resins and things like that on some of the paper that you might be burning. And it just doesn't smell all that pleasant. I really wouldn't want to be burning that in my cabin. And yeah, burning with coal is something that can be done here in Alaska. It is permitted. But as you get closer to towns like Fairbanks, you're going to find that that's becoming increasingly more difficult to do as EPA regulations are being put into place. with things starting to melt outside, poor Kenai is finding it more and more difficult to play outside because it's really muddy out. And he just wants to just bask in the sunlight, but he doesn't necessarily want to be tromping through the mud. So he's staying put for the most part. And speaking of snow, the snow, like I said, is starting to melt and everything is becoming muddy. There's puddles here and there and everywhere. But I'd also gotten some questions about using the snow to my advantage. Do I ever melt snow for my water usage? And the answer to that is 
No. I have done it in the past when I was snowed into the cabin and couldn't get out to get drinking water. But here I'm gonna demonstrate why I don't actually use snow for my water usage. Normally I would cut a clip like this down to a few seconds, but I kind of want to show you how timely or how time consuming it is to collect snow. Now granted, I could be using a trowel or a small shovel to help collect the snow, um, but I'm not. And this snow, even though it's in a mound, all the snow I'm collecting is from the top. I haven't had my driveway cleared in quite some time. So all the snow here is freshly fallen snow. And um, it's kind of iced over. So it's a little bit difficult to get into this pot here. I believe this is an eight quart uh, stock pot, maybe 10 even. Um, but I'm gonna fill it all the way to the top, as you can see here, or just about to the top. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set that over uh, a fire on the wood stove. And we're gonna see how long that takes to melt down. The total time here was just over an hour and I got about half of the amount of snow in water. I'm going to filter this water before I would ever use it. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of debris in this water and I'm going to go ahead and run it through a paper towel and a sieve before actually putting it into my Berkey. And I'm doing that because I don't want to add more debris into my Berkey filters than is necessary. But as I do this, you're going to get a real clear picture of just how much debris is in here. Another reason why I would not use this water straight without filtering it is, is because as the water collects in the clouds and the clouds travel about, they're collecting a lot of pollution um, that is going to be contained within that water. So chemicals and other particulates, which I just don't want. So while I might use this water for washing clothes or for cleaning the floors, I would not use it for cooking unless it had run through the Berkey. And speaking of cooking, as you all know, cooking is a necessity. It's something that everybody has to do. And there's just no getting around that. I'm not even going to pretend that there isn't. But there's been some concerns that people have had about cooking around or in the cabin attracting bears. And yes, bears are definitely out and about right now because they're coming out of their dens. But when I'm cooking something like bacon or a steak that creates a lot of smoke in the air, I need to vent the cabin because otherwise that smoke is just gonna set off the smoke alarms. It's just something that has to be done. And I'm not so concerned about it attracting wildlife to the cabin. This cabin is well over 50 years old and there hasn't been any evidence of a bear ever trying to break in in the course of those 50 years. So I'm not too concerned about it. When I'm outside, I'm a bit more concerned about bears, but not really. Yes, I carry a firearm on me to protect myself when I'm outside, but you can hear a bear, bear smell. You can oftentimes smell them, you know, as they're approaching and what have you. So you have some reactionary time. The other thing is, is that when I'm outside, I'm really not that far from the cabin. So the likelihood of me not being able to escape a bear or to defend myself from a bear is not very high. Um, I know there's some people that think that I'm overly concerned, but I'm really, I'm not. I'm just, you know, better to be prepared than not to be prepared. And I always say there's a first time for everything. And even though I haven't seen a bear right up against the cabin. They have been there. I've seen evidence of them. And speaking of evidence of seeing things, these are not orbs. These are in fact the splatter of the olive oil and the butter in which I'm cooking these potatoes. So if ever you see orbs in my videos, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but those are typically just dust. If you're also wondering about why I look blurry in my videos, it's not that I'm intending to look blurry. But what it has to do with is that either the lens is a little bit dirty on my camera or that the lighting is bad. And that's typically what it is. There's not a whole lot of good lighting in this cabin. Yes, I have studio lights and things like that that I can use, but the lighting um, really isn't conducive to the type of camera that I'm using to film with. 
which is typically my iPhone. And while I like filming with my iPhone, it probably isn't the best um, for doing vlogs and what have you. I do have other camera equipment, but to be honest with you, none of those are great for low lighting situations. So maybe I need to invest in some more studio lights or different lighting. Um, but yeah, I'm not trying to make myself look blurry. It's just the situation of the lighting in the cabin. I know everyone wants me to get back to cooking recipes and I will, but I am still working on my kitchen. So once my kitchen is all finished and put together, um, then I will get back to sharing some recipes with you. Kenai and I went out for a little bit this afternoon and whenever I have to run into someplace, yes, I do leave Kenai in the car because he's not welcome in every establishment, uh, but the windows are vented and as you can see, he has the full run of the back of the vehicle. He is tethered into the vehicle for his safety so he can't get through the window um, because if he sees an animal, he will go after it. Um, he has tried to bust out the windows to get to other dogs. And, you know, he's not really a bored dog. He is one to stay by my side. He's a Velcro dog by all means, but riding in the car is his favorite thing to do. He will howl and sing the entire way that we go someplace. It is what he absolutely loves to do. If you ask him to get in the car, he's the most excited puppy on the planet. But when it comes to Kenai being on a lead he's on a lead for his protection yes he will come back to me if I call him but if he like I said if he sees an animal he's going to take off after that animal and I can't guarantee that I would get him back and I never let him out of my eyesight um, so it isn't for any other reason than for his protection now the lead that you see him on in most videos is pretty long but when it comes to taking him out of the vehicle, I get a lot of questions about why don't I show that part of it. Well, for one thing is, it would mean that I need to set up a tripod as I'm doing here. And that takes some time. Typically, if I'm running into town, I'm on a time schedule because the big cities are far away from where I live. And I don't have a whole lot of time to stop and film while I'm taking him out. Usually, it's just to get him out and about, let him do his business, and then we gotta get back in the car. The other thing is, this is what you would see if I was filming him um, without setting up a tripod. Setting up a tripod means that you're gonna see a lot of this where he's just stopping to sniff something or to lift his leg. And I'm sorry, but I don't really wanna see that and I'm sure nobody else wants to see it either. So this is typically why I don't show getting Kenai out of the car. Um, is just due to time constraints and it's a lot of just looking down at the ground. Though I will try to incorporate some going forward. Kenai and I actually need to go to the post office. Well, Kenai doesn't, but I do. Right? You don't need to go to the post office, do you? Are you expecting something? <laughs> no. And in case you didn't know, I actually kept my P.O. box open this winter. Normally, I was in the habit of closing it from October 1st through April 1st, but this year I knew that I would be getting out from the cabin and so that there was no need to close the P.O. box this year. And also that brings up another question that came up, which is, can I get food deliveries here, Walmart, FedEx, um, UPS, or even DHL packages here? Well, DHL delivers through the post office itself. And yes, there is uh, mail delivery in this area, though I don't disclose my personal mailbox number. Mm -hmm. 
And as I mentioned earlier, the house is not haunted. It's just that I didn't latch the door and there is still a slight breeze out here. But back to what I was saying about uh, the post office and getting deliveries here. Yes, I can get postal, postal deliveries at, um, here to the cabin, but like I said, I do not disclose my personal uh, mailing address, only the business mailing address, which is at the post office itself. And FedEx and UPS, believe it or not, do not deliver here. Um, so no, I cannot get those type of deliveries sent directly to my home. I can get some of those sent to the PO box or I can get them sent um, to a uh, transport service up in Glen Allen where I can then pick things up directly from them. But also companies that don't ship to PO boxes means I can't get their deliveries either. So that is kind of a, a pain uh, when that happens, but it is part of living in a rural part of Alaska. The skies here have started to clear up though, and it is warming up this afternoon. As you saw, it was really cold this morning, overcast, and it was still threatening to snow. Now I think the threat of snow is gone, which is good because I'm ready for the snow to be entirely gone. As much as I love the snow, and I think it coats everything in a beautiful blanket of white, I'm ready for it to go away. I'm sure Kenai is too, because as I showed earlier, he doesn't have anywhere really to romp around in the yard because of the fact that it's all muddy and he just doesn't really care for the mud, neither do I. So with the weather warming up though, I'm gonna start making some plans to get out and about and I wanna bring you guys along for all of those adventures. And speaking about bringing you guys along, I wanna say thank you for joining me on today's video. Thank you for your support here on the channel, whether that's just from watching my videos and commenting on them. Thank you for all your questions. I appreciate that as well. I do read all of the comments, by the way, even if I don't get a chance to respond to them, I see every single one of them. But I also wanna say thank you to my channel members. To those of you who have supported this channel financially by helping me improve on my camera equipment and software, things like that, I greatly appreciate that. Whether you've contributed through a YouTube membership, Patreon, PayPal, or you've donated to the channel in other ways, your support means a lot to me. So with that being said, that concludes today's video. I wanna thank you for watching and joining me today. As always, stay safe and take care until the next time, and I'll see you then.